He's got the whole world in his hands, in his hands. He's got the little bitty baby in his hands, in his hands. He got the entire world, entire world in his hands. In his hands, he's got you and me in my family. If thinking things like God is good is something that I just know, even if it's not something that I feel all the time, even if it's not something that I feel I can see all the time, it's something that I guess was ingrained in me as a child is that God is good. And then after I would say God is good, people knew to say all the time and just to reiterate it i would repeat that all the time i see y'all went to similar churches and had similar ministries but i'm thankful to god especially this morning because on last week i was not able to come and stand before you i was not literally not able to come and stand before you because there was an attack that happened on my foot that made it where i could not stand a week ago i was in the words of my beautiful, amazing teenage daughter, a crazy cripple. <laughs> and she thought it was the funniest thing ever to see her crazy crippled father hopping through the house to get something to drink. But the part that was interesting to me is on the day that I actually found out that something was going on and I couldn't Stand. My wife was kind enough to make sure I had what I needed and braces and crutches and things like that. And I was sitting on the couch as my, ki my kids came into the house. And as they came into the house, as children normally do, they were excited and they were hungry. So they usually would be oblivious to anything going on that's not something on the oven. So they came into the house and excited and oblivious. They ran through and saw dad on the couch at an odd time of hour because father works until the evening time. So they, hey, dad, how are you? Dad, how's it going? Dad, I had a great day. How are you, dad? And then they realized that there was crutches sitting next to dad, and each and every one of them came into the house individually and had a moment of pause. What are those? <laughs> As if they don't know what they are. <laughs> each of them, like, I'm sorry, those are for you? We've never seen you hurt before. Like, like, like your foot is, you... Is them your foot broke? <laughs> mm -hmm. We've never to the point where through all of them off and they forgot what they were coming in the house excited about because they've never seen their father not be the strong standing father. And I can have to be honest and say I've never learned how to not be the strong standing father, which is why I said I asked you to go get me a drink. I'm gonna hop my way to the kitchen. One foot wonder. But the part that was interesting to me is when my, my son, who today turns six, today is my twin's birthday, y'all. Six years and we ain't lost them yet. God is good all the time. But my six-year-old son is the one that we call Uncle Sean or Grandpa Sean. Because he is the more reserved, I don't talk unless it's worth my words, old thinking young man. Six going on 60. And my six year old came into the house. He's not the one that's excited, rambunctious, and hungry. He comes into the house like any old man would, kicks his shoes off, drops his backpack at the door, and goes and gets a drink. But today he came in with the same energy and saw his father sitting on the couch. And when he saw, his father sitting on the couch, he came and sat next to me. And he put his hand on my leg and said, Pop, are you okay? All of my other wonderful, beautiful children thought it was the most hilarious thing in the world. That Pop had crutches sitting next to his chair. But then there was one son that thought enough in his empathy and in his compassion to simply sit with me. I'm not used to seeing you sit, Father, but if you are sitting, there must be a reason for me to sit. So I'm going to sit with you. 
And what God gave me on last week is that there's a lot of times where we're moving too fast to pay attention to what the Father is doing. We are so concerned with what we desire or what we genuinely need because I believe that my kids need a snack. They are so hungry when they get home. So there's a genuine need and they are usually moving so fast or whatever else might be going on around them, they become oblivious to and I think that a lot of us especially on a Christian walk when we know the father we are so used to seeing the father in one specific position we are so used to seeing the father moving and going and fighting on our behalf that we wouldn't even begin to imagine what a world would look like when we have crippled the father when we have allowed our Lack of empathy, lack of love, lack of compassion, lack of crying loud and sparing loud, lack of telling the truth, lack of reading and expelling the word, lack of being who he called us to be has crippled the father. Especially if the way that he moves if, is the church, if the church is the body of Christ. So the way that he gets things done is through the people of the church. So if the people of the church are crippled, then so is the father. If the followers, the sons and the daughters, if the children of God are crippled, and some of us have chosen a cripple called hush, where we ain't going to say nothing about who God is, we ain't going to say nothing about what he's done for my life. I just If you meet him, then praise God, we can praise him together, but I don't really feel like being vulnerable enough to tell you like what he brought me out of. Just let's stay crippled. We've crippled our mindset to feeling like it don't take all that. And the feet and the hands of God are no longer going or, or, or taking. We feel like it's time for the world to serve us, not for us to serve the people. So I wanted to first stop and say that if we are crippled, so is God. If we are limited, so is God. If we don't speak, God's not speaking. If we don't go, God's not there. And I don't mean the I'm the present God. I mean the voice, the you, the example is not there. And the title of what God wanted me to communicate to you today is that leaders follow. Leaders follow. And I think the biggest thing that we've missed in the, in the assimilation of the world that we live in now is simply that we have learned to follow everything other than the leader. Because leaders follow. So if we have learned how to follow followers or how to follow culture, how to follow what's popular, how to follow the trends, we... If we are not right, we are by default left. And if we don't do what is right, then we are by default doing wrong. So if right is not how you wake up and think, then you are by default wrong. And I know a lot of people in the season and in life and world that we live in today, don't nobody want to hear that anything that I did was not right. I know that we're living in a society and in a world where we almost feel like we are above reproach. Because even if I made a mistake today, I can list five mistakes you made yesterday. And because you are not perfect, there is no imperfection in myself that you can illuminate. I can't follow you because you fell one time. You cannot be the person that helps me pick up my cross because you can barely carry yours. When I believe that when two or more are gathered, the father is in the midst. And there was something that was hard for me to do by myself. He also says stuff like many hands make what would be a burden light. So if I couldn't carry my cross, but I had some people that understood who I was enough to know that I'm not who I used to be that says I know where you're trying to go so because I believe in where you're trying to go you can put the other side of your cross on my shoulders and we can we can walk together because I understand that leaders follow 
So I think the biggest issue, especially in the world that we live in now, is that everybody wants to be the leader. When I was a boy and I was in school, there was this amazing thing that we did every day. I don't know if it was a game because I don't think they still do it anymore. But when I was in school, especially elementary, we did it every single day upon every journey that we took. We got in this amazing thing called the line. And it was organized, it was straight, it was tidy. Like, I don't know if they still do stuff like that and play games like this. But when I was a little boy, you had to get in like a single, they called it a single file line like the way it was supposed to be straight or something like I don't know if they were biblical but and for every line there had to be a person that was like not in the back but like opposite to the back and he had to stand in the position where he kind of helped us steer where we would go as as a line and we called him the line there it is y'all went to the same school look at Jesus y'all played that game too okay but when I was a boy and I was in school, I, I, everybody wanted to be like the line leader. So when we knew we had to go to lunch, or we had to go to the playground, or we had to go across to the computer lab, like everybody, like, oh, me, 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 listen, pick me, me. And she would never pick. <laughs> she, she, would, she, she would never pick the one with their hand up. Like, it didn't matter how loud I was. No, me, like I would jump out of my me and she would like not care how cool I was she wouldn't care like how many people liked how I how I acted or like, how many friends I had she always picked somebody who like was good at following directions and I just I, I never I never understood the game because I was really athletic and I could run and like jump and then she would pick like somebody who wouldn't run or jump they would just walk in the direction she told them to go. And I, for, I, 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 I mean, now that I'm older, I guess I can understand the game. It was more of an example of how we're supposed to live. It was more of her taking the time to raise me up in the way that I was supposed to go. Because as excited as I was, like, to be the line leader, I was smart enough to understand that she never picked the one that's like, me, 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 and jumping. So I, you know, I would intentionally be like, she said, who wants to be the line leader? I would go like. <laughs> then she still wouldn't pick me. And so I, I, I built this, this disdain for my teacher because she racist or prejudiced or she was black, so I can't really. But either way, I built this view of my teacher that was like, why won't she pick me? Like, I want to be in the front. I want to be out front. I want everybody following me. And then I had to realize that she only picked people or leaders who could follow. She said, if you're going to be the leader that, 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 that I believe you can be, you got to be able to follow. And it was one time, maybe two, two years later when I learned how to shut up, that we were playing the same game in a different teacher she was like, hey, hey, we need to go to such and such. And me, I had learned over years that I don't get picked to be the line leader. So I stopped listening. And when she talked about leading the line, I just waited for the line to form so I can get single file. And, and she said, LaQuentin, would you come be the line? I, I'm sorry. What'd you say? Uh, you, no, that was my name. You said my name. As, she said, yeah, come on, come on. I was like, oh, this is not a drill. Y'all, come on, everybody get behind me. Single file. Single file, we're on a straight line, right? And what was weird to me is I was the line leader, so I was supposed to lead everybody. I'm supposed to, okay, now where we going? Where we going? Where we going? To the computer lab? To the, where we going today? And she came down and she whispered in my ear, hey, stay along the wall. Be really slow. Make sure everybody can keep up with you. We don't want to leave anybody behind. We're going to the computer lab, but we're going to stop in the hallway and I'll give you more instruction. I'm the line leader. Like, you don't, no, no, no. You said I'm the line leader. Why would I have to take instruction from anybody? You, you gave up authority and gave it like all power is in my hand. I, they, they go where I, follow, where I lead, right? Like, because I'm the, I'm the leader. And then I learned like a real quick lesson. Like, just because you were picked as the leader for the moment don't mean you don't have to follow He gave me an illustration as a little boy that even leaders follow. 
So I submit to you this morning, if part of your disposition in life is that you feel like you're a teacher, your boss, your parent, whoever it is, in a position to elevate you to something that could be called a leader, is not picking you, you might want to evaluate how well you follow. Amen? Amen. So as we came together today, y'all saw my son, and the part that's beautiful to me is he is a wonderful follower. As long as I'm right there to lead. As long as, let's say I'm in eyesight. As long as I'm somewhere in the vicinity, and he knows I'm on site, he becomes a follower of my movements, of my direction, of my leadership. But as soon as he feels I'm not there, for some reason, he is not as good of a follower. Not of my directions, not of my leadership, not of like the years that I've put in with showing him who he's supposed to go, who he's supposed to be. But I believe that all of that is, like I told you, an assimilation of who we've become as a body, as a beacon of believers, and as an example of who our daddy is. We're known to be saved at church. We are known to follow the Ten Commandments and the instructions of God and how God would have us to act and speak Holy Ghost favored in the Lord until like 2 p.m. when the game come on or like Monday when, <laughs> when I'm 10 minutes late and they still give me the write-up when I won't be doing nothing for the first 10 minutes anyway. Like whatever your testimony is. We feel like, okay, I represent the Father for as long as I'm in my Sunday best. And then when I'm in my Monday mess, I forget who I was in my, on my Sunday best. So as we come together today, we're reading the word of God. What I want to petition to you more than anything else is if you desire by design to be a good leader, you must first learn to follow. And the scriptures that God has put in the word that say things like, follow me as I follow Christ. As I open the word of God today, what I want to go is to John chapter 8. I'm going to read a bunch of scriptures. We're going to break them down. I want to go to John chapter 8, and we're going to start at, let's start at verse 12. If you have John 8 verse 12, say amen. If you don't, I encourage you to come to Bible study where we are teaching you how to be a flip page faster person. We are going through the books of the Bible where we teach you how, to, no, we, we, we don't. But frequency and, 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 and training is uh, something we can try to incorporate in this next season. John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus once again addressed them. I'm going to read this in the message version because it's youth day. Jesus once again addressed them. I am the world's light. No one who follows me stumbles around in the darkness. I provide plenty of light to live in. The Pharisees objected, all we have is your word on this. We need more than this to go on. Jesus replied, you're right, that you only have my word, but you can depend on it, being true. I know where I've come from and where I'm going to next. You don't know where I'm from or where I'm headed. You decide according to what you can see and touch. I don't make judgments like that. But even if I did, my judgment would be true because I wouldn't make it out of the narrowness of my experience, but in the largeness of the one who sent me. The father that fulfills the conditions set down in God's law that you can count on the testimony of two witnesses. And that is what you have. You have my word and you have the word of the father who sent me. They said, where is this so-called father of yours? And Jesus said, you're looking right at me and you don't see me. How do you expect to see the father? If you knew me, you would know at the same time, know the father. Father, we ask that this morning you allow your word to be made flesh. We ask this morning that it not just be tangible, but it be plain. That you allow us to see the instructions that you're giving us in your word and to follow the direction that you would have for us to go. We glorify you with our breath and with our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. 
In John chapter 8, we read the word of God where it says that he was addressing the Pharisees. And the first thing that I love is he said that I am the light. And that no one who follows me walks in darkness. So, Pastor Weaver spoke this morning about if you are not right, then by default you are left. So, if you are not doing what is right, then by default you are doing what is wrong. And the Bible says Jesus telling the Pharisees that I am the light. I am the illumination of paths. I am the direction. I am the word. And those who follow me walk in light simply because they follow me. So if I am a follower and believer of Christ, but somehow I continue to be succumb to darkness, not that I don't find myself in it, not that I don't stumble into it, not that God won't place me in it, but if I am a follower of what is light and for some reason I can't find it, I must need to work on the way I follow. Because he doesn't stop being light because you went in the wrong direction. He doesn't stop being an example or illustration because you didn't follow the instructions. God says that I am light and those who follow me, those who seek me, those who stand with me, they walk in light by default. Simply because they're with me. And what I wanted you to understand is God was creating leaders in this moment. Talking to the leaders at this moment. Saying that if you're going to be a leader, you cannot lead if you haven't learned to follow. You cannot lead if you have not learned to follow. He said because your version of leadership judges what I look like. Your version of leadership says that because I was excited and jumping and waving my hand, you should pick me. But God says, I know them for their heart. So yeah, I know he was jumping and excited. He would have been the same way in the line that I would have had him to lead, jumping and running and moving and everywhere that I didn't tell him to go. So if I don't feel like you're at the place where you can follow, I'm not going to put you in a position to lead I cannot put you in a position to lead if you haven't learned to follow because no matter what you're going to have people following you you're going to have followers no matter what direction that you're going but if you're going to be, to be an example of somebody who follows Christ you have to be more cautious of where you're leading people to have to be more intentional with the, even the direction that you're taking on the journey of leadership because oftentimes when I read the Bible, I read about people who were really good at like following direction. And I thought like the guy who got the, the great revealing of directions would be one of the people that we could use as the best follower of directions. And we call him like, you know, Moses, the let my people go dude. And, and he was at one time in the wilderness and in the wilderness, God bestowed upon him up on the mountain the, 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 the list of like the 10 instructions. We call them commandments. But this is the guy God literally gave. The instruction, I'm like, if there was anybody who would be a great instruction taker, like anybody who would follow you to the ends of the earth, it would be the guy that you literally gave instructions. But then we read the text where there's so many times where Moses could have simply said, okay, God, whatever you say, because you are the one that makes the instructions. But instead, he took God's instructions and did what he felt with it. Jumping and flipping and striking things he was supposed to talk to. I didn't tell you to raise your hand. I said, speak. Why are you fighting battles you were supposed to talk to? And God wants us to get to a place like, 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 how can I trust you to lead if you can't follow? And everybody want to lead the pack. Everybody want to be the line leader. Everybody want to stand out front, cry loud and spare not. Everybody want to hold a microphone until it's time to hold the microphone. Everybody want to sing until it's time to sing. Everybody want to come and be the, the, the main prayer warrior until it's time to actually pray. There's a difference between desiring to be a line leader and being a leader. But the thing that God does in our lives to create us to be the leaders that he would have us to be is put us in position to follow. He'll put us in position, predicaments, and situations where there's no other option but for us to follow. Because it is in following God that you learn how to truly lead. And there's so many people in the Bible that I told you, like Moses striking rocks. Samson was told not to cut your hair. Don't let nobody cut your hair. Don't tell anybody. Why would you even tell them to cut your hair? Right? 
Adam, I told you not to eat the fruit. Why would you even come? I don't care what she said. Look, however she cooked it, Adam. Because in my mind, I mean, it couldn't have just been like, she could probably had the fruit. It was well basted, oven roasted over the fire. Like, I don't know. But I'm like, no matter what she brought to the table, like, if I told you not to, then that was my instruction. How can you lead if you don't know how to follow? So now we got to, you know, that's when he first flipped the script. We talk about simple stuff like Lot's wife. Like, Lot, wife, don't turn around. Don't look back. Why? Don't look, we're destroying, don't look back. I mean, I understand the instruction, but I'm just saying, like, why do I have to not look back? Oh, they hit, I'm in somebody's house. They hit somebody then. Woo! Anyway. <laughs> we got to pray for these wives, Jesus. Anyway, in, in the text, it says a lot's wife. <laughs> Didn't want to listen to instructions, and by nature, by looking back at where she had come from, she became salty. It's almost <laughs> impossible to look back and, and keep a focus on looking back and not be salty. So he used Lot's wife as an example. And I go through all the texts, and I'm like, it's so many people like David, Bathsheba. I'm sure she was fine, but still, like, you the king, and you, like, slayed Goliath, and, like, you, you did so much crazy stuff, you couldn't find no legal... You know, single, okay. And that's, that's where my mind is. I'm like, if we are to be leaders, but we don't desire to follow, then where are we leading people to? If we desire to lead our family and we want to be the, you know, head of the table and I want to be a boss at my job and I want to be, you know, whatever your want to be is, and how could you be at a place where you want to be all those things in a position of leading when you still have to be like prodded to worship. Like you only pray when you come to church and when you eat. But you feel like you should lead people spiritually. You can't lead you spiritually. And it, 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 what God gave me is just there's so many people that want to lead who haven't learned to follow. And what I think is we're, we're waiting on God to give us, I don't know, like some instruction manual or like a list of stuff that we can read and easily understand who he would have us to be or how he would have us like how he would have us to think and treat people like it's like it's almost like we're waiting on him to give us like some paperwork or something because we don't believe people like that but we would we would listen like if I could read it for myself I would maybe I don't but when I read, I get sleepy, so I'm just seeing for myself. And we are at a place where I don't know what it is, but we just don't like to read. So much so that they stop putting names and stuff on signs. You just recognize what it looked like. You don't even read it no more. You just know that red octagon means stop. You don't even read stop on the sign no more. Yellow upside down triangle means slow down, yield. You don't even, can't even spell yield, but I don't know what's happened with our life and generations where we're at a place where you could have literal clear instruction and still be like, I'm going to see for myself. But I want everybody to follow me like while I see for myself. I want you like to reverence me as I'm on this journey and, 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 and follow me because that's why I take all these pictures and lives and snaps because I want you to be able to follow my life. Like follow me. They literally call them people followers. Like follow me as I follow might, I don't know, as I follow life instead of Christ. And I think that what God wants a lot of us to do is get back to a place where we trust him enough to follow his direction, trust him enough to follow the, the orientation of how he would have us to go. And that's why I wanted Roman to come up here and show like what it looks like to, be, to a lot of people to be goofy, but as your father just meanders around, follow your father. Because there's a purpose in absolutely everything. He didn't know what he was following me for. But now you have instruction, right? It's outside. The quickest point to get outside is that way. So go that way. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I didn't say that way. I said that way. So go that way. Straight. Like it's right there in my truck. So go right to my truck. No, 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 no. No. Right there. 
Turn around. Right, my truck is right on the other side of the wall. Yeah, go get it. So as he follows instruction, <laughs> hey, over here. It's like right here. Come up here. Right in the middle. Yeah, my truck is right there. Anyway, we want to create people who understand how to follow. Like, even when it don't make sense. Understanding that your job is not to figure out what God is doing in your life. So when you're saying stuff like, Father, show me. God is like, for what? You going to follow? If I, actually, if I actually told you what was required of you, you telling me you'd follow? You don't even eat right, and you know it's needed. If I told you that you should do it, I mean, you know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the instructions that you need to help this illustration. You can go that way. What's interesting to me is the shortest point is usually what all of us want. What we want is we want to be at a place and position where we say, Father, use me. I'll go if you send me. God, I just want to be used by you. Um, let them see me worshiping, Lord. Mm, let me bow down like I'm praying. Verses. God speak. I don't know where you, like, whatever you would. God said, well, I gave you instruction. And we feel like, okay, God, I know that you gave me instruction. But, like, the easiest way would be, like, to go straight to. So, Father, I need you to endue me with a superpower of osmosis to go through whatever wall has been stopping my blessing. Whatever wall. And God's like, how many times are you going to ask me for, like, an easy way out? Every time I give you an easy way out, you not learning how to follow. Like every time I use my miraculous super, just me being me power and, and do you with the, the, the way of saying what is and allowing it to become flesh and speaking life and speaking. When I, when I give this stuff to you, you follow my instructions less. So why would I give this to you? Every time I answer and give you that blessing, every time that I allow you to get it, you follow me less. So if my objective is to make you a better follower, which would in turn make you a better leader and better example of who Jesus called for you to be, why would I give that to you? If it's going to make you follow me less. And the funny thing with, you know, like people, is we look at this and we're like, no, this is impossible. Like, ain't no way. This is what God want me doing. I believe Roman was up here trying to figure out. He, want, he, he really going to ask me. He, my dad lost his mind. He really want me standing at the wall in front of the church. He's preaching. And he going to just go back to preaching. Like that's enough instruction. And, and not knowing like this is part of my illustration. So all I need you to do is walk out what I told you to walk out. And the illustration going to speak for itself. You're just the example. So sometimes you stuck. To be an example. You presented with a wall to be an example. If your life is meant to be an illustration of the word, your life is meant to show that God can bring you out of something you were never stuck in. God is a conqueror, He is a deliver. How can I be delivered from nothing? How can I overcome never struggling? How can I? If my life is meant to be, God, use me. God, if I'm meant to be the example and illustration that you would have for the people of God to be able to follow you the way that I follow you because I love you, Lord. But then we also be like, but God, like, why? Father, why? Father, why can't I stand? God, why am I crippled? Why, why am I on crutches? Like, I, I don't spoke healing to other people. I can't speak healing in my house over my, like, God, I don't, I'm sorry, Jesus. Listen, I, it's LaQuentin. What up? So, <laughs> You know, we done been doing this thing for a while. Like, I believe in a way that I think would make people think I'm crazy. But why, why, why? Like, I woke up and already laid hands. I put my whole foot in the oil. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> I'm supposed to be backflipping by now. And then that's when it, it, it came to me. I was like, oh, this must be for somebody else. Oh, I'm supposed to slow down. Okay, Father, listen. So whatever it is you want me to do, you know how a relationship is. You just tell me what to do and, you know, let me walk around while I do it. Like, I ain't got no issue following direction. You give me direction, I'm going to do it. I'm a line leader. You just tell me what you want me to do. I'll sit down even if my foot work. 
I'll rest even if it, you know, just let me be able to go get some water, Jesus, without looking like Pippi Longstock is hopping through the house. Let me, you know. I feel like I had to humble myself, like, but if you already spoke life, you know that I am life, you walk in me, then this must have a purpose. So I sat my happy tail down. And I leaned on the wall. Baby, you all right? I'm fine. I'm just, you know, just, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I just, you want something? I don't want nothing. I don't want, I don't want a drink. I don't, want, I don't want no food. You want to watch? I don't want to watch nothing. Yeah, I just, let me, let me. Um. And what God revealed to me while I was on the wall is that there's things that we notice as ways and that we get more comfortable with. And usually they look something like this. Right? What is this? Okay. So if I was looking for a way out, like Roman was, and this is where God led me, how would we feel? Stuck. Like God, I'm like, this can't be Jesus. I will be you the directions of... No, 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 no. God said, I need you to stay here for a second. Work on this for a second. And the interesting thing to me is we look at doors and we be like, Father, I need you to open every door. Do you? I just told you, like, if I gave you everything you asked for, you would follow me less. So sometimes doors are there just to show you that there is a way, not for you to take it. Because we can recognize this isn't one. And the interesting thing to me is how many times do we recognize this isn't a way, but still stand here? What I'm doing in a relationship just isn't working, but, you know, it's comfortable. The way that I'm a steward over my money, I mean, listen, I got red bottoms. Y'all see this shirt? This shirt ain't cheap. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I like it. I look good. It don't matter if I can't tie. Like, for what? It, it, like, I look good. I represent the Holy Ghost. They won't see me and they see Christ. It doesn't matter if I love on people. Like, if they don't love me, you got to give me the same energy that I... Uh-uh. I owe people nothing but to love them. Even if I don't like you, I got to love you. But we get comfortable on walls. Like, we get... Because they hold me up. Like, I can, I can get sturdy. Like, listen, y'all, ain't, it ain't going nowhere. I can just be here for as long as... I want, even if God wants me to find the door, even if what God wants for me is to find the door, find a way out, find an exit from whatever situation I'm in, because he says, for everything that I put you in, I gave you a way out, but we done got so comfortable in the situation of COVID-19, so comfortable just doing church when I feel like it and praying when I feel like it and I mean even if like you know my money was looking funny I'm sure the next stimulus is coming so we done got so comfortable just just existing versus living and I think what God wants us to do now is to get back out of our comfort zones enough to realize that the door has been there the whole time the way you were supposed to go has been there the whole time but we got to take up our crosses and say father I know I'm comfortable I ain't got to worry about sweating if I just sit here and nobody gonna say I'm goofy trying to open up no locked doors if I just sit here on the wall and nobody gonna have nothing to say and what I really don't want is like to 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 lose followers because I want to lead God and if I start only posting like God stuff, people gonna unsubscribe from my life. And I just want people to follow me. I just wanna be a line leader. And what I believe God is trying to illustrate today is like, you've been a leader since you got here. All your life. You led your friends, you've led your family, you've led you. And anybody else that was allowed to be taken up on that journey, you led them too. The question is, if you are to be a leader, where are you leading? Because if you haven't learned to follow Christ, then where you're leading them is 40 days in the wilderness versus 14. Because of your misfit of expression, Moses, this whole generation is going to die 
when they should have been walking in the promise because you got comfortable with that wall. What if Moses never put the staff in the water? If he said, I don't see a way out, I don't see a way through. I don't, God, why would you lead me here? Why, why would you have me take all these people and come to this place if I was going to be stuck? And God says, just trust me even when you think you're stuck. Believe me even when you think you're broken. Like, just know I made you the line leader on purpose. And everything that you've endured in your life prepared you for a time such as this. The burning bush was preparation. Floating on that river as a baby was Preparation, whatever you have endured in your life, stop looking at it like, oh God, why did I have to go through? And God is answering you saying, for right now, today, this is why you went through it. Leading is why you went through it. How strong you are is why you went through it. And I think the biggest example of illustration is, of course, Jesus Christ himself. When we're looking for words or something we can read that would tell us the instructions and direction that we would go like building an Ikea desk. I think the best illustration would literally be the man that said, I am the word. The word is me. So if you've been looking for the right word to follow, it's Jesus. The right lifestyle to try to exhibit, it's Jesus. So if you are here today and you realize that leaders follow, but you don't know what you're supposed to follow, I literally need to tell you, genuinely, it's Jesus. The difference between the direction that you desire and the direction that God would lead you to is he's been preparing this for your whole life. You came up with this in the last week or two because it looked like a good option. But the path that God made for you is a path that was created back when he created Adam. It's a path that has been literally ordained. And he tries to tell us that with things like, before I put you in your mother's womb, I already knew you. I already made the path for you. It was already done. So the issue that a lot of us have is that we don't feel comfortable with the path But no matter who you are, when God says, come to me as a child, it means that when the father says, follow, follow. Even if you don't understand why you're standing at a wall, why you're coming up and down steps, why you're touching speakers, why you're sitting up here and you're not preaching, follow. So as we come together today, if everybody would please stand. What I believe that is needed for kingdom work today at this time in this atmosphere, in this world, is a remnant of not just believers, but leaders. A remnant of people that says, you can follow me as I follow Christ. If you don't follow me because I follow Christ, you must not supposed to be one of my followers. So if the fact that I follow Christ is why we can't be in a relationship, I bid thee adieu. The fact that I follow Christ is why I can't have this job, is why I can't be in this position, whatever it is. If the fact that I follow Christ is why you won't follow me, please get out of line. We are back to a place where I believe that the remnant of people have to get back to leading. We have learned how to follow. We've taken two years of learning how to follow CDC and COVID guidelines. And they only wrote like what, two pages, Pastor? This one is so intricate. I mean, the detail. Like I told you, it's better than an Ikea desk. But God wants us to get back to a place where we say, listen, I really don't know where I would, where I would go, so I need your instruction. And if you need his instruction, he'll talk to you. He'll lead you. He'll show you. But what we also have to have is a heart to say, even if it looks like I'm going to be stuck, I'll follow you anyway. Three Hebrew boys showed us, oh yeah, you can be in the fire and God will save you. And that's the part that we yell about. But to me, they showed me that even when the whole world says stop praying, you better not. Even when the whole world says stop worshiping, you better not. Because when you don't, I'll create a hedge of protection around you strong enough that anything that comes up against you won't prosper. That's what it speaks to me. It's a lesson of being led by God. 
And I think we're at a place where we have learned to be led in every other direction. So if, as we come together today, on this youth day, where we are teaching these children how to be led, whether you're teaching them through what you actually do or what you don't, they are learning how to follow. What's going to happen when they're 18, 19 years old and you're the only example that they had? Would following Christ be the direction that they go? Would following God be something that's stirred up on the inside of them? Or would they be more concerned with likes and red bottoms? Would they be more concerned with the type of hair, type of nails, type of jersey, type of shoes? Would they be more concerned with everything on the outside of them versus what's going on on the inside of them? God is not moved by how you dress. He's not moved by how eloquently you speak. He does not care. What God cares about is having our heart. Because when you have my heart, when you have my heart, I trust you. I'll go wherever you tell me to go, which is why my son knows I would never lead him to a place where he'd be broken. I would never lead him to a place where he'd be hurt. I would never lead him to a place that I won't help him get out of. Because I have his heart. I've shown him time and time again that when everything else is against you, I'm with you. When you have no idea how you can make it, I stand there. And I'm there with you, lifting you up, helping you learn. I'm with you. And what God has been showing us with every day of our life, every situation that you should have came to, but he pulled you out of, he was saying, I'm with you. Every time you didn't have it, but somehow it came together, I'm with you. Every heartbreak, but it didn't make you lose your mind, I am with you. But we have to learn how to follow. Follow the direction. Follow the instruction of Jesus Christ. If everybody would, heads bowed. Father, we stand here today as humble believers. People who do our best simply to follow you. To love you in a way that we don't even understand. To to receive a love from you that we don't deserve. I ask today, Father God, that you search each and every one of us. Search us in a way where it reveals to us where we truly stand. And if we have been fighting against a wall that you didn't stand us at, Father, move us. Show us the way out of this thing. Show us the way of deliverance. Show us the way of overcoming. Show us that you are with us in the valley, leading us through the valley. There is a promise for each and every one of our lives and a purpose for each and every one of us to to get to in you. So, Father, I ask now that you stir up the gifts of your people. Stir them up in us that when we are going, we can see you clearly. When we are speaking, talking, and doing, we allow you to be the leader and headship of our life. We ask today, Father, that you simply be pleased with the way that we follow so that we can be better in the way that we lead. We ask you for this in all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good afternoon. I thank you all for joining us today. I hope you received a wonderful word imparted in your spirit today from our lovely pastor, Pastor Weaver. We, this is a time of service that everyone can participate. We would love for you to please bless our house. With either your time, we thank you for your view, but also with your finances. You can do so several ways through our Givelify app. You can also go to our website, which is newlightinternationaloutreach.com, or you can do so with Cash App, which is dollar sign N-L-I-O. And also, you can even mail your payment to us. We receive those as well. It's P.O. Box. Good afternoon. I thank you all for joining us today. I hope you received a wonderful word imparted in your spirit today from our lovely pastor, Pastor Weaver. We, this is a time of service that everyone can participate. We would love for you to please bless our house with either your time, we thank you for your view, but also with your finances. You can do so several ways through our Givelify app. You can also go to our website, which is newlightinternationaloutreach.com, or you can do so with Cash App which is dollar sign N-L-I-O. And also you can even mail your payment to us. We receive those as well. It's P.O. Box 1252. And that's Cordell, Georgia 31010. Thank you again for worshiping us today. We hope to see you soon.
He's got the whole world in his hands, in his hands. He's got the little bitty baby in his hands, in his hands. He got the entire world, entire world in his hands. In his hands, he's got you and me in my family.